Our next speaker is Deborah Evans. She is head of paper conservation at the Fine Arts Museum of San Francisco. She's a graduate of the Winter Tour um, University of Delaware program and has mentored numerous interns and fellows and is a Sheldon and Keck Award recipient. She has been a lecturer for graduate museum studies and art history programs at JFK University and University of California, Berkeley. <coughs> and with James Bernstein, she has taught 25 week-long mastering in painting workshops at venues around the US and abroad. She will be speaking on Old School Meets New School, Fundamentals of a Successful Training Partnership. And she, this paper is given by Deborah, but she uh, wrote it with Anisha Gupta, whom you heard earlier, so I won't repeat her biography. Please welcome Debbie Evans. Hi. I think the two photos that are up uh, sort of say it all. It's analog versus digital, even in the preparation of this talk. <laughs> I like this quote from The King and I. It's a very ancient saying, but a true and honest thought, that if you become a teacher, by your pupils you'll be taught. On occasion, conservators have um, come up to me and said, how can you have interns? I don't have the time. Um, what they don't realize is that it's a net gain. We teach each other, but I definitely get the better of the deal. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be able to contribute to the training of a young conservator. It's important to pass down repair techniques that we older conservators have had the luxury of practicing for decades. The new knowledge that young conservators bring to the table and the questions they ask thoroughly vitalize any studio lucky enough to have them. Our laboratory at the Legion of Honor has been particularly fortunate, having hosted over 60 interns and fellows over the course of 40 years. These conservators form an incredible alumni network. We strive to make their tenures positive and productive for both of us. Let's talk about some of the ways we try to achieve this. First of all, we try to find projects where we can work together as a team. There's nothing like group energy, right? Projects like these are great bonding experiences. You know how it is. You talk about different conservators' methods, about treatments you have done, and the ones that went wrong. You talk about life in general. Note the format of our lab. No individual stations, just big tables. We think this setup promotes more communication. We believe that interns are capable of the highest quality of work. Their enthusiasm is high, their eyesight is fantastic, <laughs> and they have more time for focused attention than their bosses, who are constantly pulled in many directions. Therefore, if a Rembrandt drawing needs treatment, the intern might be selected to do that work. Being assigned works that are important and valuable is a great confidence builder for the intern. Assigning interns treatments of study collection material does not allow them to achieve their greatest potential. It is especially motivating when interns are able to treat objects slated for exhibition. There's nothing like seeing the results of your attentions up in the gallery. We like to find a really big project that is a large artwork for every single intern. Extra large works always come with some extra problems to be solved. With this 17th century print, there was the issue of the quantity of treatment on all of the pieces of the print, as well as the problem of how to join them into a whole. We are always happy to have large-scale projects that can be done in the galleries, as with, the, as with this early 19th century wallpaper and an unconventional contemporary piece. And you saw the project that Anisha worked on, which won the prize for the largest work um, of paper to ever be treated in the Legion Paper Lab. 
and the treatment, planning, and installation of this was indeed monumental. Since many paper conservators will find themselves employed in places without a photo conservator, we think it is important that they have experience examining and treating photographs. And since the Legion of Honor is one of the few museums in the US to have a permanent gallery dedicated to the display of artist illustrated books, and since the conservators at the Legion are the ones to install that gallery, we think it is a great opportunity for our interns to get solid experience in book display. We take pride in coming up with new and discreet ways of displaying books. Our interns love to invent new tricks for book installation. For example, Heather Brown photographed a book binding in order to print paper for wrapping rare earth magnets to match. We all have them, those scary artworks that lurk in our drawers, the ones that seem beyond hope. There's nothing like a lost cause to ex exercise many conservation techniques and creative approaches. We try to find each intern an artwork that is substantially damaged so that they can have the joy of bringing an artwork back from the dead. Something Laura Neufeld celebrated in this slide for her internship presentation at Buffalo. This Marion print was so badly stained and darkened that we decided it was a case for potassium permanganate. It helps the interns to see that you might have to haul out the big guns when warranted. This print was completely unexhibitable before treatment. It underwent blotter washing, bathing, light bleaching, pulp filling, and lining before a masterful in-painting job. It was a real transformation that culminated in exhibition, a best-selling poster print, and an article in the Believer magazine. We encourage our interns, and particularly our fellows, to undertake more focused studies that culminate with presentations and publications. Crest fellow Nina Quebec studied the exhibition of works on paper displayed uncovered. At her urging, we liberated our Rauschenberg cardbirds from their old-fashioned acrylic boxes. It's a great example of how interns can bring you up to date and improve institutional practices. Anisha brought us into the 21st century by replacing our failing hygrothermographs with data loggers. About time, you're saying. I know. But it took an intern to carve out the time and make it happen, and our institution is very grateful. Anisha installed a data logger that also tracks light and discovered a very damaging pattern of light being on in the middle of the night. We were very excited about this new tool, so we encouraged Anisha to put together a poster for the AIC meeting. In anticipation of, of an upcoming Rouché exhibition, Mellon Fellow Heather Brown studied the light fastness of the screen prints Ed Rouché made, made using food products. She recreated the prints herself so that she could understand the material better and be able to do extensive testing. Heather spoke in public to docents and visiting groups, posted blogs, met with the artist, and summarized her findings in a poster for um, the IIC meeting. That's the kind of full-fledged project we think is great for the fellow and great for our institution. We think it's really important that our interns work closely with our curators. They too have found the exchange to be mutually beneficial and enriching. We are eager to lend out our interns to work with crew members on installations. We are also happy for them to learn adjunct skills in other departments. 
We make sure our interns have opportunities to share their knowledge in a variety of venues, in-house and out. They've spoken to everyone from high school students to Stanford scientists. Our museum offers many platforms for our interns to promote their projects on the web, including blogs, Instagram, and Twitter. Interns are particularly tuned into these venues for publicizing our conservation projects. Service to the field and active participation in conservation organizations is encouraged. One of our interests is the oral history project of the American Institute for Conservation. Engaging with conservators at the opposite end of their careers is a generational exchange that gives our interns a sense of connection. This coconut, which I sent to my teacher close to 40 years ago during my summer internship at the Bishop Museum in Honolulu, resides over the intern station as a reminder of the appreciation that exists between intern and mentor. When people come to our lab, uh, they often notice how organized it is and how many good features there are. It's a tribute to our interns. They have consistently made improvements. A few years ago, when the AIC meeting was in San Francisco, we were asked to host a tour of our lab. We decided to highlight our many intern projects, which are identified by red tags in the following images. The tour group loved the intern focus. It is an official requirement for our interns to leave a legacy project that we can identify. I'll show you a few more examples. Sarah Freeman made this beautiful flag book structure to house drawing media reference samples. Thanks to Allison Luxner, we have this small box of samples at the ready for talking about different matting and hinging techniques. Our tool drawers were a jumble before Katrina Newberry outfitted them with linen line compartments. Jeffrey Warda engineered our transition from analog to digital photography and left us with an easy to follow workflow. This is another good example of an intern having a major impact on a host institution. The small things are important too. Nora Valensek introduced us to her recipe for a gel poultice for hinge removal. Now we always keep a supply in our fridge at the ready for hinge removal. Lauren Neufeld's study on flattening thin papers turned out to be a very useful tool for us beyond the treatments she did during her internship. She left a reference book with actual samples so that when we now have an easy, easy to use guide when we have a thin paper to flatten, which isn't that often, so you often forget. So we have this great uh, reference to um, carry out a, a flattening with thin paper. And Laura later spoke on the subject at an AIC meeting. Adam Novak's project, previously mentioned, is a mainstay in our department library. Adam left a comprehensive record of his work printed in booklet form, which makes a convenient prop when we are lecturing to large groups in our library. Adam also presented this treatment in a talk at an AIC meeting. Jennifer Badger put together a didactic display on the making of iron gall ink, which we keep in a drawer with an iron gall ink drawing from our collection. She also compiled a reference binder of the best articles on the subject. In one of our other drawers, we keep a sample of Nora, Laura Neufeld's work with dry cast pulp, in this instance used on a 17th century print. We have a number of drawers in our lab 
housing artworks and didactic materials, including before treatment photos. As a result, we are always ready with interesting projects to show off when our director brings in surprise visitors. When Victoria Binder was an intern, she noted that the museum did not have disaster response cards. Her research and design resulted in a very important piece of our response program. We think conservators are more creative and productive when they are having a good time. Some examples, matching t-shirts for cast pulp research and sheriff's badges for policing questionable flora in our annual bouquets to art event. Getting a little goofy especially helps when the workload is intense and it's always important to celebrate a job well done. Psychologists say that traditions strengthen group bonds. We have important traditions in our department that we know contribute to the cohesiveness we feel as a group. For example, one of our curators organizes field trips that, that reinforce the connection between the art in our exhibitions and the city we live in. Our favorite tradition is the birthday cake for each person in our department. These celebrations turn into the best kind of department meeting. On the day of one's birthday, the arrival of the birthday pony is a surprise to anticipate. <laughs> he is surreptitiously dressed according to the birthday person's current project. For example, my recent pony had a lab coat and sheriff's badge to match what I wear for bouquets to artwork. It's worth noting that this wonderful tradition was started by Victoria Binder when she was an intern. I don't think the birthday pony can travel, but I'm sure all of you have your own great traditions. Please share them with us. We'd love to hear about them. The Legion of Honor raccoons help us thank Victoria Binder, the third conservator in our paper lab team. And yes, these are really animals outside our museum. <laughs> and I must say, how can we not have a good time when we are surrounded by things like this? <laughs> Finally, we want to honor all of the Legion interns and fellows who have contributed so much to our lab over the years. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was delightful. Are there any questions?